performance. Thank you. Can y'all hear me? We're good. Hmm? What? S slides. Yes. I'm not Cataboom. That's important. Okay. Uh, so my company is called Verifomics. We look at your DNA and find personalized ways that you can get healthier that are tailored to your specific genetic background. And what sets us apart is that we then we validate those predictions through clinical trials. So our central motivating idea is that your DNA controls the way that your body responds to your lifestyle that different fruits and coffee, sunlight exposure, medicine, they all affect people differently, and almost everybody has something that they've found makes them healthier, either if they do it or if they avoid it, and that's because your body is different from other people's body, and that is due in a large part due to your genetics. So if we can understand that, we can take something like this, which shows that there's, in a large population, the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, no association between vitamin A intake and change in BMI over the 10-year time period the study took place. That's because people respond to vitamin A differently. And by taking that into account, we can take this association and turn it into this association, where we can identify a group of people that seem to gain weight when they increase their vitamin A intake, and a group of people that seem to lose weight when they increase their vitamin A intake, which is why in this population as a whole, there's no association. And if we can validate that and apply that to medical practice in a way that people can access, we can make a lot of people healthier very quickly, and we can drive down healthcare costs because the problems that this addresses are huge, and that's why we spend 17% of our GDP on healthcare, and that needs to stop. So the vision here is your genetics determine what is healthy for you. Lifestyle is not one size fits all. And that by analyzing these big data sources like Mesa, we can find and predict your response to foods and supplements so that you can get healthier quickly. Basically, we're writing the owner's manual for your body. So you can go directly to actionable medical advice that's actually possible to do. Not eat less and exercise more, that's asking you to be hungry for the rest of your life. Something simple, take a vitamin A supplement or eat one quarter of a dark chocolate bar. That's something people can do. So the way we do that is we take the clinic out of clinical trials. We look at the health, genetic, and lifestyle data from our source data sets we got from the NIH. We analyze it and we make a prediction about you. And then to test that in a clinical trial, we take those predictions and use our remote enrollment clinical trial system. Basically, we take your genotype data. If you're an Ancestry.com or 23andMe customer, you can just upload it to our app or through our web browser and then tell us what condition you're interested in studying. If you're not genotyped, we're, we're setting up deals right now with the genotyping services providers so you can get genotyped. We look at that and we make a prediction about you and we show you the trials we're currently running that we think will help you. You can look at that list and pick one that you want to participate in. So let's say you pick coffee. We'll ask you to change one thing about your lifestyle. It's an interventional prospective clinical trial. Drink two cups of coffee per day may be the, the thing we ask you to do. You then log your response so let's say we're trying to make you lose weight, what you weigh, and then did you drink the coffee yesterday? And that allows us to do the test to figure out if our predictions work and to improve them so that when we actually take this to market, we're sure that it works and who it works for. To participate, and this is big because clinical trials are hard to recruit people for, <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. We don't need to take any samples from you if you're already genotyped, and if you're not, it's saliva, it's two mils of spit and it doesn't cost any money, which are all barriers to clinical testing in the past. So that's our key innovation, clinical trials without the clinic. Because you need to test these things in a clinical trial, there's a regulatory niche for us. We take foods, supplements, and non-invasive medical devices, which are safe enough, we don't need a clinic, and that makes it two orders of magnitude cheaper. We can do something that costs $3 million for $30,000. We are Ford for clinical trials. We're a factory for clinical trials, and we're cheaper for the same reason a factory is cheaper than a workshop. So the way we're going to make money with this is we take our validated conclusions and then we sell them as a genetic test, either through a direct consumer avenue or through doctors. We can also make money in products and supplement sales during the trials, and we can act as a contract research organization like we're already doing for our first client, Axon Optics. Long term, it's also a pharmaceutical company. Basically, we can use foods as a, a library of molecules to discover new drugs. Right now, we've got regulatory approval through the um, Institutional Review Board. It's an agency that's uh, accredited by the um, Department of Health and Human Services for 130 different studies. 
Of those 130, 20 of them are currently in progress. You can go to verifomics.com to, to learn more about that. We have one client already. They make therapeutic eyewear for uh, migraine, uh, people who suffer from migraines. And actually, we have a deal that's almost done now with Ancestry.com. Check us out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that applause for the gong? Because he did really well. He was paying attention. Yeah. Richard's on All top right. of things. Today. Um, let's do some questions. Yeah. Let me set this up. Do we have any? There we go. So what's in it for me as the, as the participant? So that's a somewhat complicated ethical question, but the simple answer is <laughs> the same pitch as any other clinical trial. It's early access to cutting edge medical research. It's also the fact that the risk is comparatively lower than most other clinical trials because it will be something like coffee. We're running coffee studies right now, for instance. It's also novelty for, for some class of people. And then the, the main way we're focusing on users initially is motivated patient communities. Do you need more people for the coffee <laughs> Yeah. So yes, yes we do. Um, but you're not guaranteed to be eligible for it. It'll be based on your DNA. Do you have any liquor studies? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that would have to be a decrease only intervention. So we do work with the people who sell these things to get discounts, but we don't provide them, no. Could you please cover what was in the two slides that you missed? Yeah, so that's team. <laughs> Thank you. Cheater. All right, yeah, it was just that one. I, I love that question. All right, so I have a PhD in biomedical science from UT Southwestern. Okay, we have science, business, and marketing, done. All right, yep. Good. How can we help? We need users. We're also fundraising. Uh, I will be around afterward. I'll hand out cards for either of those two things. Mm -hmm. Would you need FDA approval in order to give medical advice? Yes, that's what the clinical trial is for. That, that's, that, that is the whole thesis of the clinical trial. <laughs> yes. That's the idea, yes. Did you just heckle the questioner? I like. <laughs> A little bit. It was an excellent question, though. I mean, that, that is the industry, yeah. I mean, okay, so this, this gets to something I care deeply about, so I, I apologize. I'm going to hijack this. Personalized medicine has been done in a very googly way right now, where you move fast and you break stuff, and that's because it's been coming out of Silicon Valley. The problem with that is if you take the Google model and you apply it to medicine, the stuff you break is people. And that's not okay. And so the real change in our approach here is that we've taken this front first, do your 18 months before the FDA catches you, and then fight them publicly for another nine months while they deal with it approach, and we've flipped that. We're starting with the science, and then we're launching products that we know work, that we've gone through the proper channels. And the way we do that is we've changed the equation. It used to be that they did this because it was so expensive and so hard to do that. And because we're a factory for clinical trials, it's not that hard for us to do that. So it's not a hardship for us to do it right. And that's what we intend to do. Hmm? Are, your, are all your studies based on weight loss or are they around other uh, medical issues as well? So the studies that are up there right now are weight loss, rhinitis, insomnia, and migraines. We're launching joint pain studies sometime in the next two weeks. And then we have five other phenotypes, which unfortunately I don't have memorized, but <laughs> we'll be expanding it as we move on. There's a survey up on the site now, so if there's something I missed that we aren't covering, you can tell me, and yes, I'll add that. That's absolutely something I will do. Uh, so there are a lot of companies I call genotyping services providers. Um, 23andMe and Ancestry.com, for instance, are ways to get genotyped. We interact with them in much the same way that Netflix interacts with Cox. That we are finding new applications for their product, not necessarily competing with their products. I, I welcome communication with these companies. I want to sell their products for them and find new uses. That's how I interact with them. <laughs> it's such a new industry. It's a wide open space. It's a blue ocean. Competition is silly at this point. How do you keep the people for the trials coming in um, once you get this up and running? So we're trying to help them. That's the main thing. And then we're also trying to make the app fun and easy to use. Yes, you can. Yeah. Very carefully. Yeah. 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are there any genetic traits or something that you have identified? Yes, so this is a beauty shot, and I apologize for that. Um, so we launched our trials at the beginning of March, and that's too early to say anything definitive, and I will get in a lot of trouble if I do. There are some things that, if they turn out to be real, knocked my socks off, but I can't really say anything more specific than that. What kind of transparency do you have with your uh, people in, in, in the trials? So another wonderful, complicated question. Um, but the idea is that as much as we can without influencing their behavior, without applying different uh, placebo effects. Did you hear that gong? I did hear the gong. And then I ignored the gong. All right. <laughs>